fasting. As we move into the Easter season, I've asked you if you would take three days, one day in April, one day in May, and one day in June to fast the entire day. And there'll be Wednesdays, every, every one of those days will be Wednesdays. So let's talk about fasting, why it's important, what it is, we'll define it for you, we'll talk about the different ways you can fast, and we'll talk about what results you can expect from fasting. So first of all, fasting is defined this way. It's abstaining from food or drink for a designated period of time and is always accompanied with prayer. So no matter what kind of fasting you do, you may add another kind of fasting to it. You may fast food and you may add fasting social media to it. But regardless, the main focal point, the centerpiece, is abstaining from food or drink. During this season, I'm gonna ask you, do you have the fasting bug? That's what I'm gonna keep asking you. Do you have the fasting bug? The bug, B-U-G, is an acronym for what we want to, uh, a result, our goal we're looking for, for a season of fasting this time. The B is become more sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. The U is unclutter your life. And the G is go deeper with God. So those are the three goals that we have for this season of fasting. So. Fasting is all throughout the Bible. Everywhere you look from Genesis to Revelation, there's fasting everywhere, right? So think about the instances of fasting, if you can, for a minute. In the book of Jonah, Jonah chapter 3, the people, they heard the, the good news of God. They fasted and repented. And then later, in the Day of Atonement, Leviticus chapter 23, God says one day a year, as a nation, you should fast. And that's the Yom Kippur, or the Day of Atonement. Another example was David says in Psalms 35, 13, he humbled his soul and fasted. Jehoshaphat called, called for a national fast in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. A whole national fast. Everyone in the whole nation had to fast because they needed a victory over their enemies. Daniel fasted. Obviously, we've done the Daniel fast before. He fasted for 21 days, didn't eat the delicacies and the meats. Another time, we understand that Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights as leading up to his public ministry. The, the elders fasted in the book of Acts chapter 14 for wisdom, wisdom from God. And finally, I want to draw your attention to the fact that Ezra called a national fast for the people to fast for God's protection. So, what kind of fasts are there? There's essentially four different kinds of fasts. The first one, there's a regular fast which consists of abstaining from all food and drink except for water. Apart from the supernatural enablement, the body can function only three days without water. So that's Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4. Right? There's a partial fast. A partial fast is when one abstains from some particular kind of food, as in the case of Daniel while in Babylon. That's the Daniel fast. The third kind of fast is what's called the absolute fast. That entails no food or liquid of any kind. Ezra 10, Esther 4, Acts 9, 9. This should only be for a short period of time. For anything longer than three to five days, you should seek medical advice, it says. So here's how, how I do a fast. Well, let me cover the last one. Um, there's also something called the supernatural fast, and that's a 40-day fast. And I can tell you I've done one of those in my life, and it absolutely is supernatural. You need to be called by God to do that, and you need God sustaining grace all throughout. So I went 40 days and just drank water and liquids. So those are the different kinds of fasts. So generally, when you think about a fast, and let's just talk about a one-day fast. There are two ways you can do that. You can fast 24 hours, which is what I normally do. I wake up in the morning and fast morning to the next morning. That's how I fast for a one-day fast. Some people fast their breakfast, their lunch, and into the late evening, they have a small meal. That's another way to fast. So it's between you and God. Let me tell you, uh, let me emphasize again the importance of fasting food, though. Some people say, well, I'm going to fast chocolate or I'm going to fast TV for a week. No, when you fast, it has to be food and drink. All right. So um, years ago, Dr. Bill Bright says, why should you fast? This is what it, this is the suggestions that Bill Bright gave. Fasting is an expected discipline in both the Old and New Testament eras. Number two, fasting and prayer can restore the loss of your first love and for, for the Lord and result in an intimate walk with God. Next, fasting is a biblical way to truly humble yourself in the sight of God. Next, 
It enables the Holy Spirit to reveal your true nature, spiritual condition, resulting in brokenness, repentance, and a transformed life. Fasting will encourage the Holy Spirit to quicken the Word of God in your heart, and its truth will become more meaningful to you. Next, fasting can result in a dynamic, personal revival in your own life and make you a channel of revival to others. So it's really important that fasting is a way of humbling your heart before God and giving up the most important thing in our lives. Let's face it, we can't live without food, right? So every time I fast a meal, my mind is thinking, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, which pushes me toward, God, I need you. And that I take the time generally during my meal time, I would normally eat, then I have a season of prayer. So just abstain from food and or drink and focus your attention upon God. Your attitude when fasting needs to be that of Isaiah chapter 58. Let me read to you a couple of verses from Isaiah chapter 58. <clears throat> the prophet says, Why have we fasted, do you not see? Why have we humbled yourselves and you do not notice? Behold, on the day of your fast you find your desire, and you drive hard all your workers. Behold, you fast for contention and strife, and to strike with a wicked fist. You do not fast like you do today to make your voice heard on high. It is a fast that which I choose a day for a man to humble himself. It's the bowing of one's head like a reed. It's the spreading out sackcloth and ashes as a bed. Will you call this a fast, even an acceptable fast to the Lord? And this, is this not the fast which I choose? Here's the key. To loosen the bonds of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. So what was happening in Isaiah's time was they were fasting for wrong motive. What God says is when you fast, humble your heart and believe that this kind of fasting will undo and break the bonds for people. So that's the attitude, a humble attitude. What do you expect? What should you expect when you fast? That's a very important question. Number one, expect to be hungry. <laughs> that's part of the deal. Number two, expect whatever your goals are. Remember what we said our goals were. Our, do you have the fasting bug, right? Being more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, uncluttering your life, and going deeper with God. That's what you should expect. The result is that. The results are whatever you prayed for, um, and you should be aware that no matter what happens, if it's a one-day fast or a three-day fast or a seven-day fast, at the end of the fast, you will find yourself closer and more intimate with God. Now, different people have different experiences. Some people, when they're right in the fast, they feel real connection with God. They feel the Lord speaking to them word after word after word. Other people don't feel that. It's after the fast is concluded, then all this revelation comes. So fasting is just individualistic. So I'm going to ask you to join us in getting the having the fasting bug for April, May, and June. And I hope it's going to be a really great experience for you.